Hello and welcome to the Horoscope Vault, a podcast that explores the world through the lens of astrology. Because this world is doing so much, there's a lot going on. And if you're here, it's probably because at some point you've thought there is more to life than meets the eye. This is where I share translated astrological symbolism, ancient techniques made modern, to support you in making more confident decisions. You can explore any interest or even disbelief in astrology on this show safely, trying it on for size to see if and how astrology works for you. I'm Charlie, an associate member of the American Federation of Astrologers and astrology reader for radios, The Bob and Sherry Show. This episode is the astrology forecast and exploration for October 2024. And since it's also National Book Month, stay tuned until the end to discover the best non-fiction book recommendations, which are tailored specifically to what your zodiac sign is currently experiencing. These book recommendations are on point with what you, your sign, is evolving through. So the main themes of October are correction, followed by analysis, followed by intuition, followed by transformation, followed by refinement. And then the last theme is about choosing your struggles wisely. So for October 1st and the 2nd, the sun conjuncts Mercury. And the 1st of October is really some information or opinions shared that requires correction. This is just correction as the first theme happening through communication or some kind of contact with others. It's going to be collaboration in a beneficial way, or it's going to be differences that help you see what is and isn't working for you. And then October the 2nd, the new moon Libra eclipse is a chance for a fresh start. It has to be. It's a once and for all kind of fresh start. And some things might be said, or you may be preparing for things to be said. This is using the voice, not submitting, and not compromising against your best interests. And the opening of October really ramps that up. Libra is the sign of compromise, but this must be in your favour. So this is not going against your needs. And there are some zodiac sign specific episodes that detail the new moon Libra eclipse a little bit more, so I'll link those below. October the 3rd to the 7th, the turn of a theme is about analysis, which is simply that after the correction or the need for correction is highlighted, you'll realise and recognise what is practical and what parts of that deserve attention right now. This is a little bit of determination, motivation, it's feeling ambitious to improve on things, but there is some agitation and frustration because things don't move as quickly as the mind or the ego desires. There's just a lot to be said for delayed gratification here. The Mercury-Mars square during this time frame, around the 5th or 6th of October, reflects tension between thoughts, which is Mercury, and actions, which is Mars, creating a challenge in decision-making and communication. And in the context of delayed gratification, This aspect can signify this kind of inner struggle between the impulsive urge to act now, to act quickly, Mars, and then the need to think things through or plan carefully, Mercury. The lesson here is about balancing impulsiveness with reflection to achieve long-lasting rewards, even if it requires waiting for those rewards. The next theme from October 8th to the 13th is intuition which is a message of feeling like you're getting on the right path, despite the recent difficulties. This is a point in the month where clarity comes to eliminate doubt. It's a very potent manifestation time. October 8th in particular is a very amazing time to manifest. If you understand the idea of timing being everything, this is it. This is the time to create what you need, what you want, through paying detailed attention to the necessary points of the process that you're trying to, I guess, manifest. This aspect involves Mercury in Libra trying Jupiter in Gemini. 
Jupiter in Gemini, I mentioned in previous episodes, is not in its happy place. Jupiter in Gemini is in detriment, simply because Jupiter is in the opposite sign from its home sign. So it is the furthest away from home that it can be. You might experience this as having a difficult time making things happen. Not an impossible time, but a difficult time. Don't buy into the pop culture crap that these manifestation boss type influencers are saying when they say just think positive or whatever. That can work. I'm not denying it in its entirety. Absolutely, positive thinking can work. But you've got to be in the right environment for it. And this ain't it. It's right now, the world is a challenging environment where success is not impossible. It's just harder. It takes more effort than simply positive thinking. And so this intuitive theme time frame is the nicest of a recent bad bunch where you take your life by the reins and you focus your attention on the steps, the detailed steps that are required to achieve the certain outcome that you want. So it's effort, but it's a very well executed effort. Manifestation during this time is simply getting on your preferred search engine or reading relevant books and then kind of jotting out, noting out the steps that are needed on the way towards your goal. And then going through those steps, one ladder rung at a time, not winging it. This is active manifestation, which is you doing the deeds under clear instruction or guidelines, sticking to the guidelines. And with Venus in Scorpio trining Mars in Cancer during this time too, there's clarity in action where you find the method or the formula that despite previous uncertainty is assured to lead you to the specific success that you are currently pursuing. October 14th to the 19th is the budding of, it's the start of transformation. This is transforming actions into material things and goods. Very relevant following on from the October 8th manifestation portal. And so the 14th to the 19th of October indicates business success, social success, spiritual success through transcendence. The biggest point of this, I would have to say, is going to be October 14th, the Venus opposite Uranus aspect. Now, during this time frame, Venus in Scorpio enters what's known as the millionaire's degree. There are a couple of millionaire's degrees on the astrology wheel. One of them is 29 degrees of Cancer. Another is 29 degrees of Leo. And then 25 to 29 degrees of Scorpio, as well as zero degrees of Sagittarius, all millionaire's degrees. These degrees point to the potential accruing of great amassing greatness, great wealth in something. It might be money, it might be health. There are you know, many different ways to experience quote unquote wealth. And Venus entering this millionaire's wealthy Scorpio degree is a strong indicator of time to prosper with something. This can be wealth of health if you're a Gemini. It can be wealth from investments or wealth from time spent being creative if you're Cancer. It can be credit health wealth if you're Aries. And if you're Taurus, wealth comes from collaboration. For Leo, it's wealth in your home life. So that could be real estate or work that you do from home. Virgo, this is wealth through educational pursuits. Libra, it's income wealth from a job that you do. Scorpio, personal wealth management. Sagittarius, wealth of wisdom. So using the lessons of the past brings you material growth, if you use your wisdom correctly. Capricorn, wealth comes from the correct networks you form, the correct people you connect with. Aquarius, this is focus on wealth for your future. And Pisces, it's wealth of your experiences. So the things that you have stories to tell about being turned into accumulation by giving them away to others and being compensated in return. And it's important to remember that where there is wealth, there is also anti-wealth or poverty. So it's not a given that you just get this good stuff, right? It's more so that as long as your pursuit contributes to things outside of yourself 
as well as yourself, both of those boxes must be ticked, then you win the ticket. I will probably do a Millionaire's Degree episode for that specific week, so make sure you're following the show if you want to know more about Venus moving through the Wealth Degree upcoming. But Venus opposite Uranus, Venus in this affluent degree, is about being careful of who you are connected with, and not just connected with, but entangled with. Forming close ties with untrustworthy or dishonest individuals can harm your prosperity and your abundance. And this might show up as dissatisfaction with one or more of your relationships, or it's the desire to be around different people now. You might feel like the grass is greener everywhere else, except for where you are. The idea is realization of being tied to people who are toxic relationships or just otherwise draining connections. These connections hinder personal growth, success, or well being by consuming energy resources, or emotional stability. And these ties may cause a sabotage of your progress, where your goals are undermined by someone else's behaviours or actions. It might just be that connections are a negative influence. Like being around pessimistic or dishonest, people can really truly affect both your mindset and your decisions. It's just the energy drain of constantly giving to unreciprocating or manipulative individuals. And it can cause stagnation in your own experience. Being tied to people who resist growth can keep you from growing. This point, October 14th, might be an offering of seeing how breaking free from those connections is important to foster more positive relationships that uplift and support your wealth and prosperity. And then another pivotal aspect or moment during this specific theme time frame is the October 17th full moon with its message of self-actualization. If you've been waiting for the fulfillment and the actualization of your purpose, this indicates the end to whatever has been preventing that. This time frame is very self-based. Whether you're in a partnership or not, collaborating or not, there is emphasis on putting the self first here for growth that is self-fulfilling. And naturally that leads to living a life of influence that is correct for you. The next theme cycle is October 20th to the 24th. This is refinement and rejuvenation, which is like returning to your natural desires and the recharging of batteries that comes from making small progress towards your aspirations. The Mercury-Saturn trine during this time offers you the space to be more logical, more clear-headed. The time frame supports you in tackling difficult problems with success. And this might mean momentarily withdrawing to protect yourself from being overwhelmed. This suggests a moment of complete renewal where embracing a new form, locking onto the new potential ahead, makes you immune to the criticism and the problems of what has been left behind. For Aries, you have a career decision to make, leaving something behind for good. Taurus, you are forced to travel. You absolutely have to travel. And this travel answers all kinds of mental inquiries that you've been wondering about all these questions and brings you clarity of closure. Gemini, writing the terms of an agreement or adjusting the terms of an old agreement, or this might be previous paperwork submitted that you find progress on now. For Cancer, this is an important talk or collaboration about serious or long range issues or a long range goal. If it's romantic, it's good for clearing up and getting specific expectations aligned, boundaries. And if it's professional, then it's a very good time for contracts to be agreed. For Leo, you come in and solve some difficult problems with a work-related matter. It might even be on behalf of somebody else. For Virgo, it's a good time for practical investments, where others consider you to be a little bit boring or a bit of a wet blanket, but whatever, you're busy and you're in, you know, take care of business mode. For Libra, you may switch your existing life dynamics for more family time for the short foreseeable future. For Scorpio, this is about a document that is a serious matter with either relatives or property, and that now becomes very clear and to the point. For Sagittarius, it's related to a job or your source of income. So this is a good time to get your finances in order. It's a good time to 
set the prices of something if you are selling something you own or it's great for going into sales and leaving old traditional jobs behind capricorn you may receive important news or you might have to say goodbye to somebody for aquarius withdrawing is about just withdrawing from everything in order to settle your mind into some peace and quiet and for pisces it's a good time to have a serious talk to seek advice if you're in the need of advice right now and you receive words that are more helpful than you can imagine the final theme is october 25th through to the end of the month it's all about choosing your battles or your struggles wisely upon realizing that you've maybe been physically caught up in the directions of other people's lives or just directions that don't feel authentic to you chasing things that don't feel authentic and aligned to you this is a time when you get a pulse of freedom where you take action to move away from limiting experiences or limiting circumstances that are just not satisfying this is not maximum disruption yes there might be some unpredictable developments in your experience but you're not concerned by or scared of the consequences of embarking on a more genuine path because the fear of staying stuck to the fake things the superficial commitments are actually way scarier so it's this concept that there will always be a battle or a struggle but choosing something that is worth fighting for like if you're going to struggle towards something then let it be something that feels good something that lights you up that's worthwhile so october is quite the journey and it is also national book month which aligns with the signs of libra and scorpio in astrology where book time resonates with non-fiction reading and themes of reflection and knowledge and transformation libra which is the majority of october from the 1st to the 22nd this is the early part of national book month it falls in the sign of balance harmony and relationships so this is inspiration to seek out literature that promotes understanding and fairness to cultivate intellectual connections and to explore books that offer insight into human relationships or personal social justice and scorpio which is from october 23rd onwards the end part of book month it takes on a deeper more transformative energy scorpio is associated with depth and mystery and uncovering hidden truths so this part of the month is excellent for exploring intense thought provoking literature diving into psychological themes mysteries and work that dives into teachings of transformation power and the human psyche the astrological kind of backdrop of national book month is a powerful time for expanding your personal and worldly understanding through books and based on the powerful transits impacting each individual sign i've compiled a list of books that are well connected to each zodiac's current experience some non-fiction books that offer the perfect lessons of what you're going through right now the links for these will be below and i do earn a little bonus if you do purchase through the link and i've included amazon links for the most cost effective book purchases but taking a look at the ideal books for each sign and why aries the best books for you right now are books on purpose and destiny and the evolution of social networks so the first book is the crossroads of should and must find and follow your passion and this book explores the idea of choosing between the expectations placed upon you should and your true calling must it guides you to walk confidently towards your purpose and listen to your inner voice. And the second suggestion is a book called The Tipping Point: How Little Things Can Make a Big Difference. This is a classic book that explains how ideas and trends and social behaviors spread like epidemics, driven by influential people within networks, and it sheds light on the immense power of social connections in driving change. Taurus, the best books for you right now are on being unapologetically yourself and the evolution of professional goals. So the first book is Braving the Wilderness, The Quest for True Belonging and the Courage to Stand Alone. This book explores the concept of belonging, not as in fitting in with others, but as in standing fully as your authentic self. And the second book, The Lean Startup, How Today's Entrepreneurs Use Continuous Innovation to Create Radically Successful Businesses. This book prevents a methodology for building and managing a startup that can adapt quickly to changing conditions. Continuously testing, continuously learning, minimizing wasted resources and improving efficiency. For Gemini, the best books are on making your own luck and books on intense spiritual growth. 
So the first book is The Luck Factor, The Four Essential Principles, which explores the science of luck and how you can actively create your own good fortune. And the second book recommendation is The Untethered Soul, The Journey Beyond Yourself. And it's just a transformative guide to achieving deep spiritual growth and personal freedom. Cancer, the best books for you right now are to do with innovative visions and financial transformation. So the first book recommendation is Creative Confidence, Unleashing the Creative Potential Within Us All. And it's an inspiring book that encourages you to embrace your creativity and your outside of the box thinking. It provides practical advice on how to tap into your creativity and overcome self-doubt. And the second book recommendation is You Are a Badass at Making Money. It's just a motivational and empowering book that encourages you to shift your mindset around money and financial success. And the book blends humor with practical advice and personal anecdotes, really helping you break free from limiting beliefs about wealth. Leo, the best books for you are to do with rebirth in your connections and also the evolution of your connections. So the first book is Dare to Lead, Brave Work, Tough Conversations, Whole Hearts. And this is just a powerful guide to leadership. And it emphasizes the importance of your own vulnerability alongside your courage and your emotional intelligence in building strong alliances, both in your personal and professional life. And the second recommendation is the power of connection. It's how relationships help you heal. It's a profound exploration of the healing power found in genuine human to human connections. Virgo, your book recommendations are to do with deep focus on wellness and health regeneration. So the first book, the absolute must have book is How Not to Die. Discover the foods scientifically proven to prevent and reverse disease. It's a comprehensive guide to the role that nutrition plays in preventing and even reversing common illnesses and ailments. It's such a fantastic read. And the second book is Life Force, how new breakthroughs in precision medicine can transform the quality of your life and those you love. And this is by Tony Robbins with a few other co-authors. And again, it's a guide in cutting edge advancements in precision medicine and biotechnology. And it just looks at transforming health and longevity. There's a very forward thinking perspective regarding modern medicine and you know, it enables people to regenerate their health and extend the quality of life. Libra, the best books for you are to do with taking a risk in making changes. So the first recommendation is Daring Greatly, how the courage to be vulnerable transforms the way we live, love, parent and lead. And it's a powerful book that examines embracing your vulnerability and how that leads you to profound personal and professional growth. The second recommendation is The Art of Risk, The New Science of Courage, Caution and Chance. Out of the two, this is the one I would recommend the most. It's the psychology and neuroscience behind risk taking and how you can better understand and harness risk in your life. It's a science of how you make decisions in uncertain situations. It's just this fresh perspective on how to balance courage, caution and chance to thrive endlessly. Scorpio, your book suggestions are to do with power struggles in the family and rebirth of emotional foundations. So the first recommendation is a book called Family Ties That Bind, a self-help guide to change through family of origin. And it just explores the profound impact that family dynamics, family relationships have on your behavior and your emotional well-being. The second book recommendation is It Didn't Start With You, How Inherited Family Trauma Shapes Who We Are. And this explores the concept of inherited family trauma and how family emotional wounds can be passed down through generations. Sagittarius, books on time, being money and the evolution of managing your mindset seem to be the best option and the first recommendation is a book called Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World. This is a guide that kind of advocates for the importance of focused, distraction-free living for achieving high levels of productivity and success in this increasingly chaotic distraction field existence. And the second book recommendation is The Psychology of Money, Timeless Lessons on Wealth, Greed and Happiness. 
It offers insightful perspectives on how your attitude and behaviours towards money shapes your financial decisions and your overall monetary well-being. Capricorn, the best books for you are to do with control of wealth and developing motivated negotiations in partnerships. So the first book recommendation is The Automatic Millionaire, a powerful one-step plan to live and finish rich. It just outlines a very straightforward approach to building wealth automatically through very smart financial habits and consistent saving. It makes it easier to achieve financial goals without all of the overly complex planning. And the second book recommendation is Difficult Conversations, How to Discuss What Matters Most. This is a kind of guide on effectively managing challenging conversations, including personal and professional. And the book just combines insights from psychology and conflict resolution to provide you with more practical tools for navigating those difficult discussions. Aquarius, the best book recommendations for you are on rebirth of identity and unconventional self-reinvention. So the first recommendation is going to be The Art of Possibility, Transforming Professional and Personal Life. This is an inspiring book that encourages you to embrace a mindset of possibility in anything. It's creativity in your professional and personal experience, giving you a framework for shifting your perspective and unlocking new potential. And the second book recommendation is Atomic Habits an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones. This is a highly acclaimed book and it provides a very comprehensive framework for understanding how habits are formed and how they can be changed. And for Pisces, the book recommendations are about letting go of the past and empowerment through surrender. So the first book I'm going to suggest is a book called The Gifts of Imperfection. Let go of who you think you're supposed to be. This just encourages you to embrace every part of yourself, including the imperfections, and let go of all those societal expectations and help you develop more self-acceptance. And the second book is kind of my favourite, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a F-U-C-K. I don't know if I can say it on this podcast because I have to normally press a button that says that I don't curse in it, but The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Beep. And it's a counterintuitive approach to living the good life. This is a very refreshing take on self-help and it challenges conventional wisdom about what it takes to be happy and successful. This is a very grounded approach to life and emphasizes the importance of focusing on what truly matters and just letting go of the things that don't. And so that's it for this episode. Happy book month, happy spooky season. And until next time, bye. (laughs) 